Welcome back to the new you, God's best for your life. This is session number six, and today we're going to be talking about a new mindset. Now, each and every one of these sessions is absolutely critical to becoming the new you, and I'm excited about every single one of them, and today is no exception. Your thought life, your attitude, your mindset and mentality is absolutely huge when it comes to you being your best, being the person that God created you to become. And that's a huge part of your life because you are created in the image and the likeness of God. God is a triune God, a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in the same way, you are a triune being with body, mind, and spirit. So of these three components, learning how to master your mind is absolutely powerful in your life. In fact, scripture says in Romans chapter 12, verse two, do not be conformed to this world. How, how, how do you transform? How do you grow? How do you overcome so many things that this world throws at you? It says by the renewing of your mind. Transformation comes through renewing our mind and replacing the old thoughts with new, more biblical and godly thoughts. Jesus once said that no one puts new wine in an old wineskin for the wine would burst the skins and the wine and the wineskin would be lost. Instead, they put new wine into new wineskins. So wine expands. It's life-giving. It's living and active. It needs a container that's also flexible and expansive. If you put new wine in an old wine skin that's brittle and won't flex, then it's going to break and all is going to be lost. So you need to put new wine in a new wine skin. Your mind is like a new wine skin. The teaching of Jesus was so expansive, so revolutionary, that a lot of people couldn't absorb it. Their thinking was just old and hard and brittle. And Jesus knew, hey, you're not picking up what I'm putting down because your mindset is like an old wineskin. And all these teachings about the new you, it's going to be true for you as well. A lot of these things are going to challenge the, the ways that you uh, have previously been thinking. But if you will replace the old with the new, if you'll take scripture and plant it in your heart and mind, it will take you where you've never been before and the new you will begin to emerge. So we can't just do what we've always done before. Whatever controls your life, uh, controls your thoughts, controls your life. And so if you just do think what you've always thought and do what you've always done, you're going to keep getting the same old results. you got to think something new. There's a funny story about a newlywed couple that were going to make their first Easter dinner for the family. They had just gotten married a few months before, and this was the first Easter since they got married. And so they were so excited for everyone to come over to their house for Easter dinner. So as they're preparing the ham, this new wife cuts the end of the ham off and puts it in a separate pan and then bakes these two together. And her husband's like, babe, why are you cutting off the end of the ham and putting it in a separate pan and baking it together? I don't get it. She's like, don't you know anything? That's what you do. That's how you properly cook a ham. You have to do it that way. And he's like, okay, dear, you know, we'll, we'll do it your way. So they put the two pans in the oven. And while it's cooking, this new wife begins thinking, you know, I know this is the right way, the proper way to cook a ham, but why we do it that way again? So she calls up her mom and says, Mom, I know the proper way to cook a ham is to cut the end off, put it in a separate pan, cook it together, but can you remind me once again why we do it that way? And her mom said, Oh, honey, I never had a pan big enough for the whole ham. 
So I had to cut part of it off and put it in another pan. It's funny how sometimes we let old traditions, old ways of thinking that are no longer relevant to control our present lives. The Lord wants us to expand our thinking if we're going to emerge into the new you. The mind is a powerful, powerful thing. You can change your job. You can change the location of where you live, new city. You could try and change your spouse in the hopes that, man, I want a new life. But until you change your mind, you're going to take all those problems with you wherever you go. So we need to learn to change our mindset in order to change our life. In fact, in fact, uh, Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinks within himself, so he is. How true is that? As you think within yourself, so you are. You are what you think. Whatever controls your thoughts ultimately controls your life. So you are today where your thoughts have brought you and you will be tomorrow wherever your thoughts take you. Let me give you a universal principle. Bible says in Galatians 6, 7 that whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. And nowhere is that more true than in your thought life. Whatever thoughts you sow, you're going to reap from those thoughts. It kind of goes like this. You sow a thought, you reap an action. You sow an action, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character. You sow a character, you reap a destiny. And all that destiny can be traced back to the thoughts that you choose to think. You reap what you sow. Good thoughts never produce bad results and bad thoughts never produce good results. It all starts with your thinking. In his great book, As a Man Thinketh, James Allen said this, quote, a noble and godlike character is not a thing of favor or chance, but it is the natural result of continued effort in right thinking. So true. Jesus put it this way, the lamp of the body is the eye your perspective on life, your mindset. If your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light, energy, goodness. If your eye is bad, your perspective meant mindset is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. And Jesus said, therefore, the light that is in you, if it's darkness, how great is that darkness? You know, a lot of people running around feeling depressed, feeling discouraged, feeling defeated. Why? Because they've been thinking negative thoughts, defeating thoughts, confusing thoughts, instead of focusing on all the good, positive, and truthful things. Because when you focus on those things, then it's going to produce in you something much better. You're going to start to feel happier, more at peace. So your emotions are really like feedback to where your thoughts have been. So if you're feeling down, you got to ask yourself, well, what have you been focusing on? Mentally, what have you been thinking about? It's no accident that you're feeling that way. They can be traced back to your mindset. I want to take a moment right now and read to you some scriptures that talk about the mind. So once again, maybe you want to close your eyes and, and just meditate on these and just absorb these as I read them to you. Set your mind on things above. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Isaiah 26.3 be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 2. As a man thinketh, so he is, Proverbs 23, verse 7. Fill your mind with things that are good, Philippians 4, 8. Love God with all your mind, 
Matthew 22, verse 37. These are just a few scriptures that show us the power of the mind and what you and I are to do with the mind. Now, last week we talked about the old you and the new you, the old nature and the new nature, the old nature being in the image of Satan, the new nature being the image of Christ, the old nature driven by ego and pride and selfishness, the new nature driven by love, humility and faith and sacrifice. Let me read to you a scripture uh, from Romans chapter 8 that talks about how our thinking is determined by whether we're operating from the old nature or the new nature. Here's what Paul says. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what Paul is revealing here is that your spirit is always leading your life. If you're operating from your old nature, then your mind is thinking about ways to, to satisfy the old nature and satisfy the flesh. That's why you give in to temptation and that's why you start thinking about you know, material things and pleasure and all this stuff because that's all the old nature cares about. And that's why you get caught up in selfishness and ego and pride. Whereas if you're operating from the new you, your new nature in Christ, then your mind is thinking about ways to satisfy the new nature. How can I serve others? How can I be kind? What's my purpose? I want to walk in joy today. And so your mind is thinking of ways to create and manifest what the new you wants. And so we got to make sure that our heart is in the right place. Our spirit is coming from the new and not the old so that our minds can operate the way God intends them to. So and one of my favorite scriptures about this whole topic, we touched on it a moment ago, comes from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. I want to read to you from the Good News Translation. It says, fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise, things that are true, noble, pure, lovely, and honorable. As we begin to shift our focus and focus on these good and godly things, what does it do? It fills us with energy. It fills us with hope. It puts us on the right path and we get tuned in to God. You know, I've had two major dreams in my life that I focused my, all my energy and all my power on. The first one was creating a church that was a vision that the Lord showed me. And in that vision, I just saw people worshiping and connecting with God and listening to the sermon. And it was so alive and energetic. It was amazing. And so by the grace of God, I focused on that vision and day in and day out worked towards that vision. And after about 10 years, that vision was fulfilled. We were able to build a mega church, if you will. But the, the thing that's, the, that's cool about it wasn't the size, but the quality. It was full of the presence and the spirit of God. And my dream came true. My second dream is to be a missionary, to do something difficult, to move to a tropical place and learn the language and the culture and really challenge myself in that way. And so Susan and I began dreaming of coming to Neos as missionaries. And now, by the grace of God, once again, we're absolutely living our dream here in Neos, Indonesia, serving the poor, preaching the gospel, living our best life. And it is absolutely everything that we dreamt that it could be and more. And we're just getting started. I say all of that because I had to focus my mind, my faith, my everything to make those things come about. And it wasn't just me doing it. I don't take the credit. I did my best and prayed that it was blessed. And you know what? God took care of the rest. 
God stepped in and did what God always does. He met me in that place of faith and he made the dream a reality and now he gets all the glory for it. But it was because of an extreme focus that it was able to come about. Since your life goes in the direction of your strongest thoughts, are you excited about where your thoughts are taking you? I mean, you are where you are today because of where your thoughts have brought you and you will be tomorrow wherever your thoughts take you. And you might want to push back on that right now and say, oh no, Pastor Gary, that's not true. I mean, there's been so many factors in my life. Yeah, we all deal with stuff. You cannot control a lot of things that happen, but you can control what they mean to you and you can control how you're going to respond to them and you can overcome and turn that into a beautiful part of your story that's what God wants to do he loves to work all things together for good so let me ask you again since your life goes in the direction of your star strongest thoughts are you excited about where your thoughts are taking you if the answer is no if you're nervous if you're even scared oh my gosh I'm oh wow I don't even want to go there. <laughs> well, then you got to change the way you think. Right now, today has to be another new starting point where you say mentally in my life, I've got to make some changes. And it's not going to be easy because you've been thinking a certain way, perhaps for years, maybe decades. To change that thought process is going to take practice. It's going to take creating a new habit. Because in your brain, when you think a thought over and over again, it's kind of like a river that gets etched in your mind. And so that's just naturally where your mind goes. You don't even have to try. To disrupt that flow and to create a new pathway, you've got to really, really dig in to get that water flowing in a new direction. It's one gonna, gonna wanna go in the old direction. You've gotta do everything you can to put it in a new and better direction. One of the best things you can do to create that change and get excited about your future and thinking good thoughts is to start thinking about you what you want, not about what you don't want. That's how a lot of people live their life and that's why their life is not where they want it to be. They're constantly thinking about what they don't want to happen. So they're focused on the negative and they're full of fear and anxiety because their thoughts are all backwards. Successful people don't focus on what they don't want. They focus on what they do want. They've got a dream. They've got a vision. And so that's where their energy goes and they're excited about where their thoughts are taking them. It's so huge. I don't know if you've ever been golfing, but it's not easy to take this stick and hit a round object and, and give it some direction that it's going to, off the tee box, you're going to drive it and hit it in the fairway. Sometimes it's just intimidating, especially on a narrow fairway, especially if there's water over on the right. Here's what I know. When I'm thinking, I'm standing on that tee box getting ready to drive the golf ball, if I'm saying to myself, I don't want to hit it to the right. I Come on, I don't want to hit it to the right. Guess where the ball's going? It's going to go to the right. Or I might completely overcompensate and shank it way to the left. That's what you don't want. Instead, you got to say, you know what? Doesn't matter what's to the right or to the left. I'm focusing on a pinpoint area in the future, the trunk of that tree, that's where I'm going to hit this golf ball. And as you focus on what you do want, you get much better results. That's how the mind operates. I'll give you another simple example. Maybe you've never golfed before, but I guarantee you can relate to this. I get frustrated sometimes when I can't find my keys, <laughs> right? I'm like, dang it, I got stuff to do. I don't need this right now. This is holding me up. I can't find my keys. I'm frustrated. And sometimes I'm like, I can't find my keys. I can't find my keys. And I'm literally telling myself, reinforcing in my mind, I can't find my keys. And guess what? I can't find them. I'm not kidding you. One day I found my keys and they were right in front of me in plain sight. It was embarrassing. 
I knew that I was blinded to where my keys were because mentally I'm just telling myself I can't find my keys and so I couldn't. Sounds stupid, but it's true. Another time I couldn't find my keys and this time instead of freaking out and giving myself a negative affirmation, I just said a quick prayer. Lord, help me find my keys. And not, not kidding you, within five, 10 seconds, I had found my keys. Not only do I believe God helped out in his unique way, but I also believe it put me in a mental state of expecting to find my keys. So it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you say you can't do something, then you can't. If you say you can do something, then you can. That's how powerful the mind is. So what's the best strategy for mastering your mind? What's the best strategy, a simple strategy that you can employ in your life that is going to pay huge dividends? I want to give you three keys to a fabulous life. Three keys to a fabulous life. Why do I call it fabulous? Because it's going to be F A B, fabulous. F stands for keep focused. That's the first key. You have to keep focused on what you want. You've got to get clear on what your goals are. What do you want out of life? What are you striving for? What's your dream? You've got to get clear about that. You've got to get focused on it. You've got to keep that dream in front of you. Put it on the dashboard of your car. Put it on the refrigerator. Put a picture of it in your Bible. Whatever you got to do to keep focused on what you want out of life. That's huge. I'm telling you, every successful person who's created anything, whether it's Edison and electricity, whether it's Walt Disney and Disneyland, they were hugely focused on their dream until they could make it happen. You gotta keep focused. Second, A stands for active. Keep active in pursuing your dream. Whatever it is you want in life, God wants to partner with you in that. Whatever calling God has for you, whatever mission God has for you, when you begin to partner with God, miracles happen. But you gotta do your part and you've gotta keep active. You gotta stay obedient. You've gotta take the steps and do your part so that God can then add his magic and do his part. So get creative, have fun, work hard. Every day, stay active toward your dream and it will come to pass. Most people, because they are not focused, because they're not active, their dream just seems a million miles away. It just seems like a pipe dream, it's never gonna happen. But successful people inch their way towards their dream. It may seem a long way away, but you know what? Next month, it's gonna be a whole lot closer than it was this month, especially if you're taking massive action towards your goal. The more action you take, the more you're gonna speed up the process and the more your life is gonna change. So to have a fabulous life, you gotta keep focused, you gotta keep active, and B, you got to keep believing. You've got to keep believing. You've got to stay in faith. People who accomplished incredible things were those who believed they could make it happen. If you're not a believer, you're going to give up. You're going to be like, you know what? I don't believe it's possible. I don't believe I can do this. And you're going to make an excuse as to why you're not going to keep moving forward. Successful people keep believing in their dream. They keep believing in their education, in their business, and so they keep that action going because deep down in their heart they have a belief that it's absolutely possible and that's what they're put on this earth to do. So keep those three things in mind. If you want a fabulous life, keep focused keep active, and keep believing. And I promise you, as you employ that in your life, it's going to produce amazing fruit in your life. All right. I want to give you a sticky statement, something that you can say to yourself, an affirmation that will bring this new mindset teaching back into focus for you. 
And that phrase is, keep looking up. That's why I finish all of my videos with that phrase. When I sign my books, I sign it with that phrase. Because to me, the phrase, keep looking up, speaks of two things. Number one, it speaks of looking to God and staying in faith. I'm looking up, I'm looking to God, and I'm partnering with Him in my life. Secondly, for me, it means to stay positive. If you're looking up, you're looking to positive things, you're looking to beautiful things. If you stay focused on God and you stay positive, man, your life is unlimited. When I was coaching my girls in softball and soccer, I would tell them and, and the kids on the team, you can't control everything, but there's two things you can always control, your attitude and your effort. Your attitude and your effort, and the same is true for each and every one of us. So take control of your attitude, take control of your effort, make your life fabulous, and until I see you in the next session, Keep looking up.